is finally here. After teasing it for, I think, almost a week, we're going to finally discuss a little bit of my Iron Blood theories of sorts, if you will. And we're going to just kind of discuss some ships and whatnot in general. And I just want to say before I get started, if this type of discussion is interesting to you and you'd like to see me perhaps doing this kind of digging around into other factions and see what other types of ships are out there that maybe, you know, Yostar hasn't gotten around to touching on just yet. Or, you know, if you maybe especially want to see me touch on factions that have not been all that well loved. Because I know Iron Blood's far from the only faction that's not... Keeping up, I guess, is the, the right words for it. All that said, why Iron Blood? It's because it's my favorite faction? Well, that plays part of it. But it's also the fact that Iron Blood is supposed to be one of the major four factions of the game. And, well, outside of the here and there, such as the latest PR giving us Freddy, um, the PR faction just kind of feels like it's, you know, not adequate, not keeping up. Whatever words you might want to roll with there, <laughs> but I'm sure you get what my overall meaning is. But, we're here for a theory, not babbling. But the thing is, Iron Blood hasn't really gotten all that many new ships for a little while. And even when it does, doesn't get as many as, you know, some of the other factions have. Definitely not comparable to all the ships, say, the Sakura Empire has up to this point. Sakura Empire has so many ships, it's not even funny. So, what about Ironblood? Ironblood sits there with a current total of 34 as of the recording of this video for the international version. And also sometime in the near, nearish future, go up to 35 because Muse Hipper does technically count as a Iron Blood ship. And there's more than just a few problems with this. Iron Blood struggles to be right around 12 ships that aren't a vet lot, and Iron Blood is the only major faction that literally has no backline ships that aren't a vet lot. So What's going on with Iron Blood? Are they just maybe out of ships to add? Well, that's not quite the truth. There's still at least a few other things for them to roll with that we showed off as examples uh, at the start of this video, such as, you know, Leipzig's sister, Nurnberg. There is also Raf Zeppelin's um, laid down but then scrapped sister. There's, of course, also Seidlitz, if I'm saying that correctly, that was 95% complete. It was to be a Admiral Hipper class cruiser, but was then largely reconverted into a light aircraft carrier. There were several other ships that received similar treatment and stuff too. The bottom line is, there's still a few more ships. Not for maybe one more Iron Blood event for going off of Craig's Marine days. But I theorize that we might be near the end of our road, that there might not actually be that much more to be added, and it's not necessarily for the reason I just communicated. But before we go any farther into that theory, let me first discuss with you Iris Livre and the Vitia Dominion. Iris Livre as from the Wikipedia itself, is a representation of the free French naval forces during World War II, in contrast to the Vichia Dominion representing Vichy France. In French, they were known as the Forces Navales Francaises, the Braves, or FNFL. Now, several French ships had escaped to British ports before the surrender were subsequently boarded by the British during Operation Catapult and then turned over to the FFNF. Others were initially loyal to the Vichy regime, but switched sides under various circumstances. Still others were never completed or never actually constructed. 
the bottom line is, is this was a, uh, I think about the best way it can be worded is a semi rogue faction. This is a faction that kind of went its own way after Germany had conquered France. And, you know, it continued to fight back with the resources that they had at hand to do as such. And then there's the puppet state, the Vichia Dominion, and the game, as it's based off the actual puppet state, Vichy France from World War II. Now, why am I bringing all that up? What does that got to do with Iron Blood? Well, simple. The Vichy Dominion represents how, you know, these were two totally separate factions. Because in real world history, these two separate groups, they just had completely different opinions. They had different means to an end, if you will. One was the puppet state to Germany. One was resisting Germany. So due to that historical split that occurred right there, you know, eh, they don't, they don't exactly get along, don't exactly play along historically. And so in the game, that gets represented. There is a split in the game. There's two separate French fraction, uh, factions. Ooh, man. And that's where my point comes in. If we look over at Ironblood, well, Ironblood's clearly based off of Germany. And well, let's take a quick look at German history then. There was the numerous renamings of you know, Germany throughout the 1800s into the early 1900s, you know, Prussia, the German Empire, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to really get into all that. It, it was just kind of all over the place. It renamed itself fairly often. Its borders changed fairly often throughout the 1800s, especially. Um, and that's not really why we're here, but there was just basically put what could be referred to as the imperial period of Germany is what I'll call it, the German Empire. And they, of course, had their own navy and they had their own goals, their own means to an end, blah, blah, blah. Of course, they lost World War One. And when they lost World War One, there was the Treaty of Versailles. And, you know, this this came with a lot of changes and concessions and etc. as far as Germany was concerned. And well, we all know what that ultimately led to in terms of World War II and all that. So, I, or at least I would hope you have at least an inkling of an idea there. So what am I getting at here? Well, before and during World War One, Germany was an empire, monarchy. After World War One, it was a country with many restrictions imposed upon it, and it was forced to embrace, um, Quotation marks democracy. There's reasons why I'm saying quote democracy end quote. Again, a topic just too intricate to get into for this video. But the bottom line is before and during the war and after the war, World War One, we're just talking about two vastly different Germanies at this rate. And well, that's the interesting thing. Lots of ships existed during this period, but got scuttled at, you know, got the flow and eventually got raised back up and uh, were scrapped. Basically put that they had to be surrendered over and in which the entire modern Imperial German Navy had to be scrapped and removed. And they went on to have no real influence or effect on anything thereafter. Immediately after it came about what was referred to as the Reichsmarine. And the Reichsmarine throughout the 20s and the early 30s before, you know, regime changes occurred. And we start talking about the Kriegsmarine at that point. But underneath the Reichsmarine, the Reichsmarine attempted to meet Attempted is a keyword, but attempted to meet the restrictions that were imposed upon them by the treaties that were signed out of World War One. This is what led to a lot of the design decisions that existed for some ships, such as, you know, Deutschland and her sister, the Grashvi. And it's also the reason why Germany did not build all that many for flagships, quotation marks, 
And it's also why the Navy was just so severely behind and underprepared as far as World War II was concerned, because they didn't start kind of not really caring about the treaties until a little too late as far as the forthcoming war was concerned to get anywhere near complete enough of what was called Plan Z. Anyways, my bottom line is, these periods of German history are extremely different and full of extremely different design philosophies and reasons for what they did and why they did it. For these reasons, these older imperial ships, as we can call them, they wouldn't exactly fit in line with the rest of Ironblood. We're just talking about a completely different time period of German history, culturally, politically, and even, you know, strategically, etc. As you have to figure, Imperial Germany definitely tried to just fit itself more within some of the status quos that existed, if, if you know what I mean. They, they had a royal family, and they didn't exactly lead the way in all that many things as far as the Navy was concerned. They were building lo lots of gigantic capital battleships, the same as, you know, anywhere else. And when you start talking about the Imperial period of Germany, you are looking at lots of battleships and the like being constructed. But there is one thing that is pretty constant. Submarines slash U-boats. Germany always invested pretty heavily throughout the entire interwar period in both wars into U-boats and submarines and whatnot. So there's, I guess there's that. There's probably other things that I'm either unaware of or I'm just simply not bringing up within this video due to time constraints that someone will probably be more than happy to bring up down below. I do want to say to anyone currently watching and if you're sitting there thinking, wow, you're really missing out this point or that point or this or that, seriously do bear in mind, time constraints. I'm not set here trying to make a video that's well over an hour long as we discuss every little intricacy of what I'm getting at, but my bottom line is, Azure Lane has proven that if two different factions have existed within like a nation, basically put, if a nation has had points where it doesn't agree with its overall arcing narrative, if you will, they will split it into multiple factions. The goals that the Imperial Navy of Germany had were not the same goals as you know, the Kriegsmarine, and that, that's where my point comes from. And the way that they were set up politically and culturally are not the same either. So, yeah. All that stated, these are the reasons why I feel that it's going to be a couple different things. Part of me wonders if they'll add some of these older ships at all. As due to these explained reasons, they don't really fit into the story slash narrative of Azuline whatsoever. Although, that said, there is a few counter examples that do exist, such as Mikasa. Mikasa was nothing more than a memorial by the time World War II came around. So, heck, it was nothing more than a memorial before the 30s even started. But Mikasa still got to be added into the game. But then again, Imperial Japan was Imperial Japan back in the 10s and the 20s and the same with the 30s and the 40s. We are not talking about massively different countries here when we're comparing th these two different time periods. Whereas in the case of Germany, Germany was in the early 1900s and the 1910s as a massively different Germany from the 20s and even that Germany is pretty different Germany from the Germany of 30s and 40s, so. Hmm? Anyways, this is something that I've been thinking on to myself for a while now, and I've just thought, well, we've never received some of the older German ships. I started thinking to myself, for an example, this whole thought process came about because Deutschland kind of she kind of behaves as if she's the Iron Blood princess to an extent or something. She even refers to herself as having noble blood and she tries to behave like she's the leader or whatever per se. And she really just does have this whole holier than thou princessy kind of attitude. 
And I was thinking on that and I was like, man, wouldn't it be interesting if Yostar added in the Kaiser class battleships? And if Kaiser was like Deutschland's mom and Kaiser is the true leader of the Iron Blood faction or something like that. But then I started to think to myself, no, that, that, that doesn't make sense. Because there's there's problems with this idea. There's problems with that theory, I began to realize. While in Deutschland's own secretary quest, it is brought up and referenced Lutzau, which is a different time period of the history of the Deutschland cruiser. And her, her secretary quest even brings up her time period of being with, you know, the northern parliament and whatnot. Although that gets a little confusing in of itself to a few certain degrees, but maybe that's a video for another day. The bottom line is these elements are brought up, so those elements of history are clearly relevant to Ajeline's story. And we have also noticed that the Yamato class, we don't have it, but it still gets referenced in the game's story. We know they're coming. They know we know they have some significance to the game. They are mentioned, even though art and whatnot doesn't exist of them yet. And plenty of examples of that sort of thing exist. Jean d'Arc or Aris Libre was in one of the events, for an example, but has never been hinted at as far as when she'll actually be put into the game. My point is they will start giving us the story elements that these certain ships or certain classes of ships will become a part of the game and the story more often than not well in advance of when it actually happens and yet there doesn't seem to be any such evidences for the imperial period of german ships doesn't seem to be any as far as i know if i'm wrong on that please bring it up down below but as far as i know i've not seen any and that's when I began to realize there's not references or anything. They're not story relevant. And then I saw it on and I was like, well, the Imperial German Navy, it didn't have any like lasting relevance up into World War II. And then that started to make sense. Because, you know, older British ships, for an example, like the Grand Old Lady, War Spite. She was retrofitted and continued to be involved in even World War II. So of course she's in the game. Of course she's in the story. She's relevant. The Imperial German Navy. Their relevancy. So, does that mean they'll never be added to the game whatsoever? Or, due to how vastly different these two time periods are, if they did ever get added to the game, would they be their own separate faction and would the story implement them in a similar way like the PR ships and whatnot have been implemented? Because, you know, there's this story concept with the Nagelaine that ships that were never built can be brought to life. So with that kind of story, uh, it's not a stretch then for ships that just weren't involved to be brought back to life. You know, that's not exactly a huge stretch to make. So thereby, maybe they could be brought back. Or maybe the story will just go around of Iron Blood just realizes they need more numbers, they need more power. So they go to similar links and efforts that the Sakura Empire is going to, but for themselves and start bringing smaller ships like the Kaiser back. Maybe? I don't know. Who knows on that one? But it's definitely interesting to think on and I would absolutely adore to have your thoughts down below. Either way, though, thank you so much for watching. And while you're at it, when you're in the comment section, let me know what you want to see me touch on next. And if you'd like to see me get more in depth in historical uh, discussions in the future, then please let me know. Because again, I know I'm a lot of details kind of got skimmed over or skipped because again, I just didn't want this video to be hours long or something, but I'm sure there's at least a few people that would maybe like that type of discussion. And if you're one of them, let me know down below. 
Otherwise, if you like the video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, well, I'll do that too, but it might give me a tear in my eye. Please remember to subscribe. Check out the description below as that has my Discord and all that other crap. I'm sure you want me to shut up by now, so I'll do just that. Bye! Don't feel fucking